Fast forward to 2008 and the local council announced that Redcar badly needed a boost to its economy, more tourists and a new seafront. There was a £75 million budget, much of it from the European Regional Development Fund. And this was the dream. A major regeneration of the Esplanade with this so-called vertical pier at the centre. It's not going to be for everyone, but it does make Redcar Seafront look much nicer when it's lit up. Anita Earle set up a jewellery business and moved into the Beacon, along with a number of other small traders, when it opened in 2013. She was out by the end of the year. With it being Christmas, it should have been my busiest time of the year being a jeweller. Nobody came in the building. Anita says the doors kept being locked because of bad weather. There was nothing to show there were any businesses inside and little support from the council. It was like a, a new baby. You've got to look after it, you've got to nurture it, it's got to have love. And it just didn't seem to get that. The Beacon now consists of a cafe, which has been there from the start, and a local community let radio go, station. Let it go. So for a quick tour, floor three is empty. Floor six, a couple of workmen having chip lunch in there at the moment. That, I'm told, is being turned into a wedding venue. You know, if it's a beacon, we kind of radiate out and that seemed appropriate for a radio station. We have a window here where people pass and they look at us all the time. And I've had people waving at us and dancing to us, writing, um, can you give us a shout out and bits of paper and hold them at the window. The public voted for the name, opting for the beacon rather than the vertical pier. But much of the controversy was over the decision to build up and not out. Thousands joined a Facebook campaign for a real pier and there are still rumours today. I think we're actually getting a pier for it as well. I think so. There's talks going on about it again. And last year, the beacon was shortlisted as one of Britain's ugliest buildings. Amanda Skelton is head of the council. So, was all this the right decision? I think the beacon is, is work in progress. The beacon is part of a much broader regeneration programme to revitalise Redcar. Redcar needed new sea defences and the Environment Agency planned to come and do a concrete wall along the front at Redcar and we persuaded them to work in partnership with the council and get something that would be really transformational to change the town. The beacon itself cost £1.6 million to build and opened in 2013. It had 198,000 visitors in its first year, but only 73,000 over the next 10 months. I think initially there was a great deal of interest because people were curious at a new attraction. And so people did come literally in their thousands to, to experience the beacon. And I think it's natural really that, that we, we couldn't sustain that number of visitors. I'm, I'm really sorry to hear that because we've put a, a lot of effort into trying to attract and support small businesses in the, in the borough. There was public consultation before it was built with thousands having their say over the five shortlisted designs. It looks nice, it's got lights on it at night. Yes, it does bring the seafront to a bit more life. I think it's something that once you've seen, you've, you've sort of seen it and you're not really going to go back up there. 